If you are a creative professional or enthusiast considering the Asus Zephyrus G14, then you have found the right video made just for you. I have run over 14 creator-focused benchmarks covering video editing in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, motion design, graphic design, photo editing, 3D modeling, and more using the Asus Zephyrus G14. We're going to find out if this is one of the best mid-range Ryzen laptops available on the market right now. Let's get rocking! If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're gonna find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. If that sounds like your kind of place, consider subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. Also, if you're curious about the exact price or even more in-depth specs of this laptop as we're heading through the video, you can head down in the description below and click that link. Now, if you do use that link to make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Right off the bat, my biggest frustration with these mid-tier semi-budget friendly laptops is usually not the components that they put into them. Usually these laptops are well equipped to run Photoshop, After Effects, and Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. And in just a few minutes, we'll cover all of those benchmarks and more. Kicking off this video, I want to focus on the most overlooked aspects of these laptops, the quality of the screen. The Asus Zephyrus G14 comes with the 14-inch Full HD 16x9 aspect ratio matte display. The model I'm reviewing comes with a 120Hz refresh rate, but you can also get it in a 60Hz variant. The Acer Zephyrus G14 can reach 330 nits of full brightness and has a Pantone validated color gamut range of 96% sRGB, 75% Adobe RGB, and 76% DCI-P3 all at an average Delta E of 1.27. For a mid-range gaming laptop, this makes a great color accurate laptop for creators. And according to Asus website, both the 60 Hertz and the 120 Hertz screens have the same color gamut capabilities. Okay, now let's take a look at the build of this laptop. Not only is this laptop powerful and color accurate, but it also is thin and light weighing in at 3.53 pounds and at a thickness of 0.7 inches thick, it is almost the exact same as one of my favorite laptops, the MSI Prestige 15, which if you're curious about how these two laptops stack up against each other, you can check out the full head-to-head -head review in the YouTube cards above. The Asus Zephyrus G14 comes with a thin aluminum top cover and a magnesium aluminum alloy bottom cover and keyboard deck. This all comes together to create a solid, thin, and light laptop. I'm really digging the soft touch feel on the top cover. The white is very attractive and does not show smudges or fingerprints. This is a nice bonus compared to the recent Helios 300 that I've reviewed, which shows quite a lot of fingerprints. Speaking of the top cover, opening and closing the lid is easily accomplished with one hand. The hinge is sturdy and once fully opened, it slightly lifts the keyboard deck off of the desk surface to allow better ventilation beneath the laptop for the vents along the bottom cover, side panels, and behind the keyboard deck. A quick side note, this laptop does not come with a webcam. So if you need a laptop for virtual meetings, unless you buy an external webcam, this is not the laptop for you. The Asus Zephyrus G14 comes with one USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 DisplayPort plus power delivery, one USB-C 3.2 Gen 2, two USB-A 3.2 Gen 1s, an HDMI 2.0, and a headphone mic combo. I really like this selection of ports. With the two USB-C ports and two standard USBs, it is well equipped for expansion. Something that is becoming more common over the past year or two is laptop speakers on the top of the keyboard deck. This will give you a much richer audio experience compared to laptops with the speakers hidden below. We know this laptop is thin and light, but how on the go capable is it concerning the battery life? According to my usage during the benchmarks and web browsing, the 76 watt hour battery can achieve roughly nine and a half hours of web browsing and about six to seven hours of design and video editing. If you're enjoying this video and getting some value, gently press down on that like button and let me know how you plan on using this laptop by dropping a comment below. If you want more content like this in the future, then make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of my future uploads. Okay, let's get back into the video. The keyboard is soft and snappy and quiet. It has good key travel that is quite longer than your standard thin and light laptop, which I like. 
It also has great key placement. It is a nice and roomy setup that took me no time to get used to. But I must confess the backlighting is rather subpar. It has light leaks on the side of the keys, inconsistent backlighting showing through the keys, and in the dark, the silver gray contrast is a little tough to see when typing. But if you took a typing class in college, as I did, then there is no need to look at your keyboard. So how does it feel beneath your fingers is the only thing that truly matters. But I still thought I'd point that out because as far as build's concerned, I was a little disappointed by this. The trackpad is wide, but not very tall. Being that this is a 16 by nine aspect ratio screen at 14 inches, that makes sense, but it did feel a little small. However, it comes with great touch sensitivity uh, and touch gestures. So overall, the trackpad is good. I just felt a little bit crammed on this smaller laptop. All right, now on to the good stuff. Let's dive into the 14 plus benchmark tests I have ran on this laptop. The Asus Zephyrus G14 I'm reviewing comes with the AMD Ryzen 4900HS with 8 cores and 16 threads, the Nvidia GeForce RTX 2060 Max-Q with 6 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM, 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM upgradable to 32 gigs, and 1 terabyte of NVMe SSD and 500 gigs of SATA SSD. The G14 also comes in a more budget-friendly variant with 12 gigs of RAM and the Ryzen 7 4800HS that will perform a little slower than the model I'm reviewing, um, and I'll link that in the description below if you're curious about that model as well. When I say a little bit slower, honestly, it won't be vastly slower. It might be a 30 seconds to a minute slower in the export times out of Premiere Pro, um, but it won't be crazy. If you want kind of a general comparison, um, I have filmed a head-to-head -head video with the Asus Tough A15 and this laptop, and the Asus Tough A15 features that Ryzen 7 4800HS. So after you finish this video, you can head up into the uh, YouTube cards above and check out that video, which would be helpful if you want to see the comparison between those two. I know it will be a perfect comparison, but it's a comparison nonetheless. Starting things off in Geekbench single core, the G14 comes in comfortably in the fifth place spot below the Intel i7 and i9 high performance processors, which to me is to be expected as Intel still holds the crown for the single core performance on many tests. But on the multi-core, the G14 comes in at second place behind the Asus Tough A15 with its Ryzen 7 4800H. We just talked about that one. I have run this test multiple times in multiple conditions and continue to get roughly the same score. One difference to note between the two laptops, the Tough that I reviewed had 32 gigs of RAM, whereas the G14 only has 16. That could play into the score difference, but I highly doubt it. I think it just is one of those things that depending on the model, the processor is in the model of the laptop, you might have better cooling, it might have, have certain throttling limitations, there are a lot of things that play into it. But for the test that I've been able to run, we're seeing the 4800H slightly outperform the 4900HS. For Cinebench R20, the G14 comes in at first place over all of the Intel and Ryzen CPUs that I've reviewed on my channel. Quite an impressive feat AMD has made in a matter of five-ish years. They have been able to push Intel out of the top spot in this benchmark test. I'm very impressed. They are definitely stepping it up with their CPUs. For the Blender Classroom test, it was able to run the Blender Classroom GPU test at six minutes and two seconds. Moving on to motion design and 3D modeling with Photoshop and video editing benchmarks still to come. For the After Effects benchmark, I have used the Puget Systems After Effects and After Effects render benchmarking tests. For the standard After Effects test, the Asus Zephyrus G14 comes in right behind the Strix G17 with its RTX 2070 GPU and i7-10750H CPU with a score of 775. Not a bad score at all. And for the render test in After Effects, the Asus Zephyrus G14 scored a 615, coming in third place on my charge, which is definitely doable for using After Effects. Now, before we dive into the video editing benchmarks, let's check out how this laptop handles thermals, noise, and component usage in the following test. I'm not gonna lie, this laptop is a pretty noisy little guy. At idle, the fans kick on to a consistent 43 decibels, which is not loud, but it is definitely noticeable. During the Photoshop benchmark, the fans boost up to about 48 decibels and remain there for the entire benchmark. During the Premiere Pro 4K export, the fans remained at 60 decibels, which I must admit was quite loud, but very effective to export the 4K footage quickly. 
In DaVinci Resolve, same thing. Fans boosted up to an average of 59 decibels and hovered there during the entirety of the export. Here are some charts to check out the thermals and component usage of the Asus Zephyrus G14. Now the question beckons, how cool were the eager fans able to keep this laptop during the benchmark tests? Here are the thermal temps. And here is how much component usage it took to accomplish the test results coming up in just a minute. As requested, here are the 3D modeling benchmarks. And if you have any more requests for 3D modeling tests, you want me to run on these laptops, please let me know and I'm happy to include them in future reviews if possible. For Autodesk 3DS Max, we saw a 136.15. For Autodesk Maya, we saw a 158.43. For PTC Creo, we saw a 129.16. And for SolidWorks, we saw a 71.36. The G14 shows promising results for 3D modeling and CAD software. Now let's dive into the Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve to see what this laptop is capable of delivering. First, I'm going to start off with a playback test. For this test, I'm going to use a 9 minute 4K clip, adding some motion graphics, and then playing it back in the timeline at full quality settings. During this test, the Asus Zephyrus G14 only dropped 3 frames at full quality settings, which is completely unnoticeable. Now, I will say that if you start multitasking on your laptop while editing, you may experience more drop frames at full quality, but you can easily drop it down to half or fourth quality to keep your editing experience smooth. Within that project, there were 7,240 motion design frames to render, which the G14 was able to render out in 3 minutes and 6 seconds, an above average render time compared to most of the laptops I've reviewed on my channel. Now moving on to the 4K export test, I'm going to take a 9 minute 4K clip, place it into Premiere Pro, and DaVinci Resolve then export both out at 1080p and 4K YouTube settings. This is my standard test that I run on all of my laptops. The Premiere Pro 4K export to 4K, was able to accomplish it in 3 minutes and 2 seconds. Premiere Pro 4K to 1080p took 2 minutes and 43 seconds. DaVinci Resolve 4K export to 4K took 7 minutes and 55 seconds. And DaVinci Resolve 4K to 1080p took 4 minutes and 23 seconds. Now for all of my design and photographer friends considering this laptop, thanks for hanging on till these benchmarks made it to you. In the Photoshop benchmarks, the Asus Zephyrus G15 is sitting comfortably in the middle of my test results chart, coming out with a 688 Photoshop benchmark score. Definitely a suitable laptop for Photoshop tasks. I use this Photoshop benchmark to see how well a laptop can handle the most intense tool in Adobe's design suite. If a laptop can perform well in Photoshop, it will handle InDesign and Illustrator with ease. This laptop is able to handle Photoshop with great ease, meaning that you will have no problem in any of the Adobe Creative Cloud design tools. If you are looking for a laptop that is thin and light, has a bright color accurate screen, is equipped with the performance you need in any creator tool, and has a surprisingly long battery life, then I would definitely consider the Asus Zephyrus G14. Also, don't forget if the model I'm reviewing is a little out of your budget, you can check out the more affordable version of the G14 I am reviewing in the description below. Remember, if you do click and make a purchase through one of those links, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. If you want more videos about the Asus Zephyrus G14, you can click or tap the screen over here or check out another video from my channel over here as well. Keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I will see you here in the next video.